All right, well, tonight's the second video on chain rule. In this video, we're going to focus mostly on our trig derivatives with chain rule. So let me go ahead and remind you what the trig derivatives are. Hopefully, you have sine and cosine down by now. Those are going to be our two common ones. Um, we do have to know all of these, and again, by the more we practice, the more you'll get them down. Um, we did say anybody that starts with a C, its derivative is negative. Everybody else should have a positive derivative. So basically, when you start to learn them, I would learn them in pairs. Derivative of sine is cos, cos is negative sine. I would get that pair down, and then I would get the next pairs down, and then the next pair. So let me show you again how this chain rule is going to work. Remember, you always want to say derivative of the outside, keep the inside, times the derivative of the inside. So let's go ahead and look at our first example. We're going to take the derivative of the sine of 6x cubed. Now, why is this chain rule? Well, again, I said the sine of. Once I say of, we have an inside, okay? This is inside the sine function. So I want to be clear, this is inside, so I'm going to put an i there. And the sine is actually on the outside, so I'll put an o there. So the 6x cubed is inside, sine is outside. So let's just talk through the rule. Take the derivative of the outside. Well, according to our rule, the derivative of sine is cosine. And what do you do with the inside? Keep the inside. And now you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 6x cubed is going to be 18x squared. And again, lastly, you would just rewrite this, um, bringing out any coefficients. So I'm going to call that 18x squared cosine of 6x cubed. All right, let's try another similar example. Take the derivative of the cosine of 7x to the fourth. Now, I don't even know if you heard me say it, but when you read this out loud, and again, from our practice in Algebra 2, this is read the cosine of 7x to the fourth. And one thing we have to get really good at is putting our own parentheses in. Um, you know, back from your elementary school days, the word of means a quantity. So it's the cosine of 7x to the 4th, which means you need to be able to put your own parentheses around there. I would say 99% of the examples will not do that for you. Okay, and now once you put them in there, it's really nice because, again, you can see the inside. So I'm going to put an i there, and you can see the outside. So we're going to start by taking the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of cos is negative sine. Notice I'm not saying it's negative sine x. It's negative sine keep the inside times the derivative of the inside, so that's going to be 28x cubed. Okay, derivative of the outside, keep the inside, times the derivative of the inside. Oops. Um, so I'm going to say my final answer then is going to be negative 28x cubed, the sine of 7x to the fourth. All right, third example. Let's take the derivative of the tangent, say it to yourself, the tangent of 6x to the negative fifth. So again, it's so important that we can read these correctly so we can do the math correctly. So notice I said of, so I'm going to put my own parentheses in, of 6x to the negative fifth. Okay, so we'll talk it out loud. Derivative of the outside, so the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now, I'm not going to write secant squared x. I'm going to write secant squared keep the inside. So secant squared, keep the inside, times, now the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 6x to the negative fifth would be negative 30. x subtract 1 would get me a negative 6. And then again, I'm just going to clean it up. The calculus is actually over. We just need to clean this up. So out in front, I'm going to have negative 30. Um, I'm going to leave this as secant squared. I'm going to call this 6 over x to the 5th, and it's all over x to the 6th. So just to be clear, the negative 30, you can see where I put that. This x to the 6th went to the bottom because it has a negative exponent, and then I left the secant squared term. All right, example 4. Take the derivative of cotangent of 3x to the 4th. So I'm going to encourage you to pause it. Um, try it on your own, and then I'll talk it out. 
Uh, but this is where the learning and the practice comes in when we do these videos. You really do need to pause it and try it on your own. All right, so I labeled my inside and outside. The, the derivative of the outside is negative cosecant, but I'm not going to say x, I'm going to say keep the inside. Negative cosecant squared, keep the inside, times the derivative of the inside, so times 12x cubed. Um, and then again, I would just pull this coefficient out front, so you could say negative 12x cubed cosecant squared of 3x to the fourth. All right, in my last example for tonight, um, we're going to work on the derivative of secant of 8x squared plus 5x. So they already have the of in the parentheses in there for you. So again, I just want to be clear, it's really important that you understand the inside-outside. So this is inside the parentheses, this guy's outside. So again, I'm just saying to myself, derivative of the outside, so my outside is secant. It's derivative, now here's what you have to be careful, is secant tangent. So it's secant, keep the inside, tangent, keep the inside. So I'm going to say it's secant, keep my inside of 8x squared plus 5x, tangent, keep the inside, 8x squared plus 5x, times the derivative of the inside. Okay, so its derivative, uh, that would be two power rule there, so that's 16x plus 5. So again, c can't keep the inside, tangent keep the inside, times the derivative of the inside. Well, that does it for us. Um, we'll have some practice problems, um, and don't forget to come in and ask questions when you need it.